Praise the Lord, everybody. Um, welcome in. So glad that we're able to connect again for uh, Midday Motivation. This is uh, Monday edition, uh, group care. We're coming together to uh, be a blessing one to another. Uh, as you come in, I would just encourage you to take a moment uh, to go ahead and drop that word that describes your mental state or how your day has been going. And also, if you wouldn't mind, um, just taking a moment to share because we want to make sure that uh, those who may not be connected to uh, the ministry, uh, that they are able to also participate. You know, some people are dependent on our uh, sharing in order to get access to the midday motivations. Uh, we, we wrapped up our discussion on um, battling against uh, loneliness and dealing with loneliness and depression last week. Uh, but since this is um, Mental Health Awareness Month, uh, we're going to continue in our discussions of various topics uh, that are impacted um, or impact our mental uh, well-being. And so this week we're going to be dealing with friendship. And I know a lot of people might be saying, well, how does friendship have anything to do with um, your mental health? But uh, there's, there's quite a bit of uh, evidence. There's a body of work out there that supports that solid friendships are very important for our mental well-being. And even if people have been clinically diagnosed with, um, with uh, some sort of mental health challenge or mental illness, uh, it has been determined that solid friendships facilitate uh, their ability to not only cope, but to thrive even uh, with uh, mental illness. And so today um, we're going to begin our discussion on, um, on friendship and then next week we're going to deal with happiness and interestingly enough uh, today my uh, my word is actually happy I'm, I'm feeling real happy today it's been a good day so far I'm really excited about um, many of the things that God is doing and so I'm looking forward to God just being a blessing uh, to to me as well as to being a blessing uh, to each of you so as we discuss the whole uh, idea of friendship uh, one of the things I want to make sure before we get into the deep of it is that we pray for one another because uh, that's what friends do. And so let's just take a moment to pray not just for those that we care about but also those uh, that may be giving us challenges right now because we, we may never know that they may turn out to be friends. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, God, for giving us another opportunity to come together uh, for group care, for these midday motivations. We ask that you bless each of us, Lord God, to be receptive to what you're doing in our lives, that we've taken this time out, Lord God, and we want to be willing and able to hear you clearly as you're speaking to us. We ask that you would bless each one that's tuned in, as well as those that would tune in at a later time, and those who we might share this information with. We're also asking that you would bless those, Lord God, that currently in our lives, we, we're struggling to understand why they're even there why why are they part of our daily lives or why are they in our lives at the moment lord because there may be times that we come to realize that these people were brought intentionally by you so lord help us bless us and guide us and allow us to come to an understanding of why people might be with us so that we can have true friendships we ask that you would continue to bless those that are in leadership both governmental political leadership corporate leadership and spiritual leadership that each of these individuals as they lead those that they're responsible for that they would do it with wisdom and they would do it with understanding and with clear vision this we ask right now in Jesus name we pray amen and so what I would ask again is if you would just take a moment to make sure that if you haven't already that you would just pause and share uh, with others so as they come in um, they will be able to benefit from what's being taught and also take a moment to uh, put a word that describes your mental state, how you're feeling today, uh, how your day has been going. Uh, this is a beautiful day here in Memphis. Uh, the sun's shining and I uh, just felt we'd get out and get a little bit of uh, fresh air and we thank God for uh, a day like this. And so I would just encourage you uh, as we're kind of thinking about this, we're going to walk through and talk about uh, a few uh, definitions. Uh, we're going to spend um, the, the bulk of our time here today um, in one passage of scripture and that is found in the book of Proverbs so Proverbs 17 uh, and verse 17 so chapter 17 of Proverbs verse 17 
is where we're going to spend the bulk of our time today. Uh, but one of the things I, I want to just make sure I, I make clear is so today we're going to spend some time talking about what friendship is not. Um, um, we'll, we'll talk about what it is and then we'll spend the bulk of the time talking about what it's not. Then we'll talk about the importance of mutualism um, for uh, mental health and well-being. Uh, we'll talk about that on Wednesday and then we'll really get into the nuts and bolts of what true friendship is on Friday and how it impacts uh, mental health and mental well-being. And so as we, as we kind of think about this, um, a, a good working definition of friendship, um, really if you kind of think about friendship and it's, uh, it's where it's found, particularly in the Old Testament, uh, where we're, we found our, our key verse here, uh, it's the word raw uh, in the Hebrew, and it means to tend a flock uh, that is, or to pasture it, or in other words, to pastor or to shepherd. And I think that when many of us uh, think about friendships, we don't think about somebody that is kind of pastoring or shepherding us, somebody who is tending to us and, and helping us to, uh, to pasture or to uh, take advantage of our surroundings. But this is essentially what uh, we have been uh, called to when we've been called to be friends. Uh, that a friend uh, is someone who is going to be looking out for our well-being, even sometimes when we're not looking out for our own well-being. That's why I do think it's ironic that a lot of people are called friends when they're not actually friends. I, I, I like the way LinkedIn does it um, because uh, those are called connections. Uh, I think a lot of us have connections, but we don't have a lot of friends. Uh, Facebook, I think, got it wrong because you've got thousands of people who are considered your friend, when in reality, if you saw them face to face, you wouldn't recognize them. Um, because their face, a Facebook profile picture has been doctored by filters and, and all kinds of things. So you, you, wouldn't know what, you wouldn't know them even if you saw them. And even if you live just down the street from one another, when you do come together, you really don't have much to say. Uh, but the reason you were connected had nothing to do with any mutuality. It had nothing to do with any meaningful relationship. Uh, some of you have dug up people from your high school days that you didn't even like then. I don't know why you're trying to like them now. It, it is amazing to me uh, how we, we have tried to resurrect relationships that we buried uh, in, in the name of social interaction. And so what, what, what God is trying to get us to understand is that part of the reason why many of us struggle uh, in, in a lot of ways with our mental health is because we're trying to extract out of certain relationships something that will never come out of them. Uh, as my parents would always say, you can't get blood out of a turnip, you can't make a racehorse out of a donkey. There, there are certain things you just cannot do. And so uh, trying to make a friendship out of other forms of relationships is um, counterproductive. It leads to frustration, it leads to anxiety, and in many cases, it leads us to feel lonely and in other cases, depressed. And so when we think about these things, friendship uh, is very important, but it is a relationship where the person is taking a, a significant active role in helping you to become a better version of you. It's not that they don't accept you for who you are, but they have a vision and a reality that you could be more than you currently are. Friends challenge us. Friends support us. Friends are the ones that are there through thick and thin. I know that uh, there's a saying that friends know all of your, um, your challenges and friends know all of the dark times you've been through. And then it says best friends have walked through those with you. So what, what God is really saying to us is that true friendship is more than uh, you look good on social media. Uh, friendship is more than likes and follows. But friendship requires a level of interaction that causes us to be able to be that support network that helps people to uh, be spiritually, physically, and emotionally balanced in feeling well. And so um, when we think about friendship, it's always supposed to be in a positive context. 
When people say, I got a toxic friend, that is not a friend. And so we should never couple up friend with some kind of adjective that has negative connotations associated with it. Friendship is always positive. So we need to be careful who we call our friends. One of the biggest mistakes that we make is we try to make something a friendship when it's not. Uh, in a number of studies on friendship um, and social support, it has been determined uh, that friendship and so social support are linked to better physical and mental well-being. There's a lot of research that supports the fact that if you, um, if you find somebody that has a strong support network, they also tend to be more emotionally, uh, psychologically, and physically uh, healthy because of that support network. So friendship is very important for mental health. In fact, there was a particular study that studied young men and women, um, and they were discussing very difficult times in their lives because a lot of people have experienced childhood trauma, which has impacted them mentally um, for, for the balance of their lives. It's been said that oftentimes when people have experienced childhood trauma, it's not until their mid to late 30s they're able to reconcile some of these things. That's why a lot of times when you have uh, people saying, well, if this happened to them as a child, why are, why are they just now coming forward? They're 40, 50 years old. Because it's usually at that point where we have matured to a place and we have a sufficient support network to be able to come to grips with some of these uh, traumas that took place at an early age, where as a young person, you couldn't really understand why someone who professed to love you uh, treated you in such a way. And so it, it's important for us to, to understand and appreciate uh, the connection between a support system, friendship, and um, uh, mental health. And so in this study, when these individuals um, were able to spend some time um, sharing these difficult times, when they were in the presence of a friend, in the presence of a support system, it says their pulse rate was lower, uh, their blood pressure was lower, and they felt um, calmer under these circumstances. So what is this saying? It's saying that even when you're sharing some of your deepest and darkest secrets, some of the things that have impacted you the most, in the presence of a support system, they have a natural uh, physical impact on your regulation of your blood pressure, of your pulse, uh, of, of, of just all of the things we talked about uh, on Friday uh, concerning uh, those neurotransmitters that bring bonding and well-being. And so having a good friend, even when you're talking to, say, a psycho psychologist or psychiatrist, you're having a conversation where you're disclosing these intimate details and you have a support person with you, it has impacted these people for the better. And so uh, when we think about that, you have to understand that the contrary also occurred, that those that did not have a sufficient support network, uh, they were much more likely to surf, suffer from mental health disorders at, like anxiety and depression. So friendship is important in maintaining a good, healthy uh, mental stability. Um, so let me just pause there before I transition into uh, the scripture and just remind you, if you haven't already, uh, just take a moment and, and, and drop a, um, a word that describes your mental state uh, or how you've been feeling up to this point today, how your day is going. And then also, if you haven't already, just take a moment and share and invite people in. Uh, because I think it's important for us to just remind everyone that, um, again, relationships and friendship in particular, uh, it, friendship is always supposed to have a positive connotation. If it has a negative word before it, whether it be um, bad friend, negative friend, toxic friend, those are oxymorons. They cannot be your friend and be toxic. They cannot be your friend and be negative. They cannot be your friend and be counterproductive. Friendship is a title, a, a, a description that should be re uh, reserved only for those individuals who demonstrate what the Hebrew states they would be called to do, and that is to nurture, to lead to pasture, to pastor or to shepherd. That is what a friend does. A friend wants you to become great. A friend wants to support you through all of life's challenges. That is what a friend is. 
that's why it's no coincidence that a lot of the people that you meet in middle school, studies have shown that middle, middle school friendships last less than a year. Uh, it's usually relationships that you develop in your adulthood that have longevity. So people you meet in college people and beyond tend to be more of the people that you stick with long term because they are now helping you to navigate, help to shepherd you through some of the most challenging periods in your life. And so if we wouldn't mind just turning real quick to Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17, we're going to read this, we'll dissect it a minute, and then I'll take a few minutes to just kind of uh, talk to you about what friendship is not. Um, so Proverbs 17, 17 says, a friend loveth at all times and a brother is born for adversity a friend meaning a shepherd uh, loveth meaning act of continuous divine commitment love is not a a a butterflies in your stomach love is not uh enabling uh, love is not this feeling of swooning when they come in the room love is a divine commitment and it is a continuous commitment. That's why it says loveth. Loveth is like the, the English gerund ing. It is a continuing thing. It's not something that happens once, I, I loved you. No, love is something that continues. And so a friend or a shepherd uh, loves or continuously, divinely is committed uh, at all times. And a brother, which is defined as kindred of reciprocal relationship. It's important for us to see this here because uh, brother does not mean uh, flesh and blood. It means one that is kindred of reciprocal relationship. Many of us have deadbeat relatives that are no closer than our very best friend. Uh, a brother in that sense is someone that is kindred of reciprocal relationship. I know I don't spend a lot of time talking about fraternities, but there's one that I know very well that tells you that friendship is essential to the soul. And I think it's important for us to, to know uh, that friendship is essential. And we'll, over the next uh, couple of days as we talk, we're going to talk about that relationship between Jonathan and David, which is a very special relationship. It was an essential relationship for both of them. Uh, if you were to take words from the scientific community, it was, it was mutualistic, it was commensal, it, it definitely benefited um, both parties. And so one of the things uh, is symbiotic, uh, to be correct. And so I think that when we think about uh, this, well then what is friendship not? Well, uh, friendship, for, for example, is not uh, social ship. Uh, and so if we were to divine, define the word social ship, that's to get together with another in social settings because our similarities and we have common interests. Uh, a lot of people are calling folks friends. You have nothing more than a social ship. You get to re get together socially, uh, but there's nothing more than some common interests that are there. But when the going gets tough, that person is not there for you. They don't have your back. They will run down the street to get away from you when, when heat comes. Uh, these are not the kind of people that you would want to say love you at all times and that they are committed to you in adversity. They're just people that you socialize with. Uh, and so social ship is not friendship. An example of social ship um, would be uh, Saul and the woman of Endor that's found in 1 Samuel chapter 28, verse seven. Uh, they called her a familiar spirit. And these are people, you know, they just have commonalities. You're seeking out information from them, but they really don't bring any value to your life. Uh, enable ship is not friendship either and enable ship is to be drawn to another because of our common insecurities and weaknesses and the need for validation so we both got problems we come together and we commiserate our problems uh, that, and so we enable one another to stay problematic we enable one another to be in our defeated state we enable one another to continue to fall short uh, we don't we don't draw close to these individuals because they're going to challenge us to be better we draw closer to these people because they relate to what we're going through and we can both just be content in the situation that we're in. And so we have people like that. And, and if you kind of think about it, uh, Paul had suggested an example of this was in 1 Timothy chapter number five, verse 13, 
where he was telling Timothy that he had been an enabler of the young widows. The widows indeed, the older widows, they needed the support. Uh, but these younger widows, they, they were just taking advantage of him. And in fact, uh, they were going from house to house being busybodies, but there was nothing really valuable actually coming out of the relationship. And so many of us find ourselves interacting uh, with people. And because we know that uh, they have some of the same shortcomings, some of the same insecurities, some of the same um, deficits that we have, we feel comfort in knowing that we're, we're, not, also, we're not alone. And, and we know that that's important for loneliness, but we're not supposed to stay in a particular condition. That we're supposed to have people that are gonna come in our lives that can relate to it. They're not gonna judge us for it, but they're gonna challenge us to be better. And so an enableship is one of those kind of relationships where the person is just, they're, they're content being in their condition, they want you to be content being in your condition, and you commiserate together. That is not friendship. That's enableship. Uh, there's also transactionship. Uh, this is where people um, they they rely on another um, for um, for what is what we call an actual or perceived benefit uh, that person can bring to them. This, this is the people that are out here clout chasing. Uh, they they're trying to have a relationship with you because you might give them a, a increase in social status. They they want to have a relationship with you because they know you have credibility. And so now they want you to let your good name end up being evil spoken of because you're associating with the wrong people. You know, a perfect example of, of transactionship is somebody who only wants you around for what they can get from you. You remember when Samuel in, in first Sam, I mean, uh, Saul in first Samuel chapter number 15, uh, when he was told that he had saved Agag and he was wrong. And this is the same passage where all of you get that, uh, it's better to, um, to, to um, obey than sacrifice. This is where uh, Samuel had basically told him that we're gonna rip the kingdom out of your hands. God is done with you. And, and, and Saul said, you know, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. I was wrong, I should have done right. But bless me now in front of the people. In verse 31, he said, okay, you're right. Uh, you know, I'm wrong and everything, but still let the people know that, that I'm all right. Use your credibility as the high priest. Uh, use your good name uh, to, to salvage my reputation. I, I'm, I'm in a transaction with you. My relationship with you is purely transactional. I just want you to do something for me. And so when you're in relationships with people that are transactional, where the, 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 all of these bad types of relationships, when you call these people friends, it messes with your mind. And it causes you to have mental health challenges because you're gonna have people that are going to cause you to go through changes because you thought they were a friend and they were nothing more than uh, a social ship or a enable ship or a transaction ship or uh, as many of you young people out here dating, you're in nothing more than a situation ship. And that is when you are drawn to someone uh, because of convenience or proximity, uh, where you both are vague about your long-term intentions um, for the very purpose of being able to enjoy short-term gratification. You're not going to be clear about what your long-term intentions are or what kind of commitment you're willing to make because you're only concerned about your near-term gratification. You're in a situation, you haven't defined it, you haven't really been clear about it, so you're just in a situationship. And, and, and that is the kind of thing that Samson was in with the Philistine woman. She pleased him at the moment. So he went and asked his parents, uh, uh, she pleases me, go get her. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know how serious I wanna be about her, but she's pleasing me right now, that's who I want. And so many of us uh, uh, spend our time in some of these dysfunctional situations. We're in a social ship, we're in an enable ship, we're in a transaction ship, we're in a, a situation ship, but we're not in a relationship. And I'm telling you, if you're in these kind of things, you're gonna be in a lonely ship in the middle of an ocean all by yourself. And so I'm just going to encourage you that you need to look for a friendship. And that's what we're gonna spend time talking about uh, on Wednesday, that friendships are mutual. Friendships are symbiotic. Friendships have somebody who's looking to shepherd you and you're willing to shepherd them. You're going to support one another. You're going to challenge one another. You're going to help one another be great. Uh, you don't want anybody in your life that doesn't want you to be great. You want people that are not gonna be jealous of your greatness. They're not gonna throw roadblocks in your greatness. They want to see you succeed and excel. And so this is what God is calling us to. 
many of the mental health challenges that we are facing is because we have some baggage in our lives that are nothing more than the people that we call friends that weren't friends from the beginning. God is going to help us through this. And so I'm just encouraging you uh, to pay very close attention uh, on Wednesday and on Friday as we finish this discussion on friendship and how it impacts uh, the, the uh, concept of mental health. So this is Mental Health Month, Awareness Month. We are talking about mental health topics. In fact, we, we're dealing uh, right now with friendship. Next week, we're going to deal with happiness. And um, let's just continue to come in, engage in group care, engage in um, supporting one another. That's why each time we put that word that describes our mental state, describes how our day is going, because every day is not going to be peaches and cherry. Uh, not every day is going to be uh, chocolate. Uh, some days are gonna be challenging. We need friends that are going to help us navigate this. And so as we close out, I just wanna remind you, uh, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 12, 15, uh, we gather together for midday motivations, group care. Uh, we also uh, offer our Bible study, 7 p.m. Uh, on Tuesday evening, Central Time. Empowerment prayer, Thursday evening, 7 p.m. Uh, Central Time. And then on mornings, we have Sunday morning service, uh, starting with Sunday school at 10 a.m., 11 o'clock morning worship, both times Central. So as we close out, we're gonna pray for friendship. We're gonna pray for uh, leadership. And then we're gonna close. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for your love and your kindness, God. We thank you right now for the true friends that we have. Uh, it's not about numbers, it's about quality. And so, Lord God, even if we just have a few good friends in our lives, we are blessed. We thank you for the friends that you have brought in our lives. But more importantly, we thank you for you being a friend that sticketh closer than any brother. We thank you for the relationship we have with you, God. We thank you for the relationship we have with our brothers and sisters. And we thank you for this opportunity to come together for group care for those that would support us uh, as we navigate the challenges of this pandemic. We're also asking God that you would bless those that are essential workers, as well as those that are in leadership positions facing this pandemic for the first time, not knowing where to turn, and hopefully, Lord God, they'll turn to you. So during this season, Lord God, create environments that are conducive for leaders to be yielding to you so that you can yield them unto the, uh, the work that you would have them to be undertaking for the benefit of all their constituents, those in political realm, those that are in the corporate realm and those that are in the spiritual realm. Let us all, Lord God, submit unto your uh, mighty hand that you would lead and guide us. This we ask right now in Jesus' name we pray, amen. So we thank God for you all. Again, if you haven't done it already, drop that word that describes your mental state or how your day has been going and also take a moment to share. Even though we're coming to an end, somebody might pick up right from here and may be blessed. So go ahead and take a moment to share before you log off. Um, before you move on, looking at your, your, your new uh, profile emoji uh, and, and understand that uh, this is powerful, important um, information that we know God uh, would like to bless somebody with. So take a moment to share and also take a moment to drop that word. And I would just encourage you to be blessed. So be safe, take care of yourself. And if you don't have any reason to be out, I would encourage you to stay home. In Jesus name, we thank you. Amen.